Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q4 FY24 and full year FY24 financial results of Fortis Healthcare Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. And there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anurag Kalra, Senior Vice President, Investor Relations at Fortis Healthcare Limited. Thank you. And over to you, Mr. Kalra. Thank you, Michelle. A very good morning and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to Fortis Healthcare's uh, Quarter 4 FI24 and FI24 on its call. Uh, the call is being chaired by Dr. Ashutosh Raghuvanshi, our Managing Director and CEO. Within, we have Mr. Vivek Goel, our Chief Financial Officer. For Medulous Diagnostic Site, we have Mr. Ranand K, the Chief Executive Officer, and Mr. Mangesh Ashutosh, who is the CFO of Medulous Diagnostics. We will begin. Um, uh, we will begin the session with some comments by Dr. Raghuvanshi uh, on the performance for the quarter of the year. Followed by which we will request uh, Mr. Anand to give his comments on the Agilis business, and then we can open the floor for question and answers. I hand over to Dr. Ashutosh Raghuvanshi now. Thank you, Anurag. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for taking time to join us on our Q4 Financial Year 24 earning calls today. I hope all of you are doing well. Before discussing our Q4, <coughs> before discussing our Q4 and full financial year results, I'm delighted to announce that our board has recommended a dividend of INR one per, per share, which is equivalent to 10% of the face value of second for the second consecutive years, subject to shareholders' approval. This signifies the transformative path the company has embarked on over recent years, leading to the healthy operational and financial performance. This also underscores the strengthening fundamentals of the company and its ongoing potential for growth. Coming to the performance of company, I shall comment on the year as a whole and then move on to Q4. Our performance in financial year 24 has been commendable demonstrating a marked improvement compared to the preceding years, and noticeable, noticeably this performance has been led by a strong performance from our hospital business. For the financial year 2024, consolidated revenues for the company stood at INR 6,893 crores, a growth of 9.5% over financial year 23. Within this, our hospital business revenues have grown 11.3% to INR 5,686 crores, while the diagnostic business revenues have shown a marginal growth of 2% to INR 1,372 crores. Our consolidated operating EBITDA increase 15.1% uh, to INR 1,268 crores which translates into a margin of 18.4% in financial year 24 versus 17.5% in financial year 23. Within this, the hospital business operating EBITDA margins have improved from 16.9% to 18.6% in financial year 24 with an EBITDA of INR 1,058 crores. The hospital business EBITDA contributed to the total consolidated EBITDA has increased to 83% as against 79% in financial year 23, signifying the profitable growth witnessed in the business. Operating EBITDA margins in the diagnostic business uh, basis gross revenues were at 15.3% versus 17.7% in financial year 23. However, after adjusting one-offs related primarily to the rebranding exercise undertaken by Agilis for the brand change and the provisioning related to the business with Directorate General of Health Services, New Delhi, the operational 
Operating margins improved from 17.7% in financial year 23 to 19.5% in financial year 24. At the consolidated reported PAT level for the year, we reported a profit after tax of about 645 crores for the year as compared to 633 crores in financial year 23. On the quarterly performance, we recorded a consolidated top line of INR 1,786 crores in Q4 of financial year 24, a growth of 8.7%. The hospital business revenues grew by 10.3% to INR 1,490 crores, while the diagnostic business gross revenues witnessed a marginal growth of 2% to INR 338 crores. Our consolidated operating EBITDA for the quarter was INR 380 crores, reflecting a margin of 21.3% versus 16.5% in Q4 of financial year 23. The operating EBITDA of the hospital business grew 51% to reach at INR 333, while margin of with the margin of 22.4 percent in Q4 of financial year 24 versus 16.4 percent in Q4 of financial year 23. The quarter number also includes certain year-end adjustments related to write-backs of excessive provisions, unclaimed balances expected credit loss and other adjustments which are accounted for in the quarter but pertain to the full year. Operating margins in the diagnostic business were at 14% versus 14.9% in Q4 of financial year 23. However, after adjusting the one-offs I had mentioned before, the operating margins improved to 15.9% in Q4 from 14.9% in Q4 of financial year 23. Our consolidated reported profit after tax for the quarter increased 46.9% to INR 203 crores. On the balance sheet side, we have further reduced our debt by INR 76 crores to INR 264 crores, representing a healthy net debt to EBITDA of 0.17x as compared to 0.30 as on 31st March 2023. Before I start the operational highlights of the business, I would like to touch upon and share with you the good work that we do in our day-to-day -day lives. We have in financial year 24 undertaken more than 60,000 cardiac procedures, approximately 1,100 transplant, close to 28,000 joint replacements and ortho procedures, 7,800 neuro and spine procedures, 11,000 radiation therapy for our patients. This speaks volume of our expertise and the confidence that patients have in us. Otis facilities across the network continue to perform life-saving procedures and successfully undertake complex surgeries in various medical specialties all backed by our dedicated clinicians and state-of-art medical infrastructure. It is continuing care for good motto that is resulting in the performance that you are seeing. Now, some matrix of our hospital business for financial year 24, our hospital business had an occupancy of 65% compared to 67% in financial year 23. We added 246 beds during the year in our various facilities, and hence our occupied beds have remained largely similar to last year. Our POP for the hospital business witnessed a growth of 10.8% to INR 2.22 crores in the financial year 24. This was primarily driven by a substantial uptick in revenue from our key focus specialities, including oncology, cardiac sciences, neurosciences, renal sciences, etc. These specialities collectively experienced a 13% year-on-year growth in financial year 24, accounting for 62% of the total hospital business revenue. 
up from 61% in the corresponding previous period. Higher complex surgical volumes in select medical specialties have contributed to the increase in RPOP. For instance, volume in key procedures such as transplant grew 11%, while in robotic surgeries and radiation therapy, volume growth was in excess of 50%. In addition to above, our revenue from medical travel grew 12% in financial year 24 to reach INR 479 crores. Revenue contribution of international business stood at 8% in financial year 24, similar to financial year 23. Throughout the year, our commitment to enhancing clinical programs persisted across all facilities marked by investment in advanced medical infrastructure, emphasizing growth in specialities like oncology, neurosciences, and cardiac sciences. We expanded our clinical offerings bolstered by high-quality talent. Noticeably, the year saw the addition of reputed clinicians in various specialities, including nephrology, neurology, cardiac sciences, oncology, gastroenterology, general surgery, and urology. Our pursuit of superior clinical outcomes and patient experience is augmented by digital initiatives like the implementation of electronic medical record system across our network, ensuring excellence in care delivery. I'm pleased to share that the company has made significant progress in advancing its strategic growth levers, including brownfield bed expansion, portfolio rationalization, and investing in the state-of-art medical equipment. In order to provide advanced treatment options to our patients, we have and continue to upgrade our medical infrastructure, having commissioned Linax in Mohali and Noida, a cat lab and an MRI at Anandpur, ortho robots at FMRI, Shalimar Bag, Noida, and digital PET CT at FMRI. Further launches of similar such medical equipment across four facilities is expected in the current fiscal year as well. We are progressing well on our brownfield bed expansion plans. We have added beds in financial year 24 in facilities such as Mohali, Anandpur, Mulun, and BG Road. I am pleased to share that we have also launched a 70-bedded new facility in Ludhiana making this our second facility in the city and fourth in the state of Punjab, giving a boost to our presence in the Punjab cluster. Our extension strategy continues to focus on deepening our cluster presence. Our plans to ramp up the uh, brownfield bed capacity remains on track and would enable us to potentially close to 6,000 beds over the next few years. When completed, we can also expect to see some of our key facilities such as Shalimar Bagh, FMRI, Mohali, and BG Road becoming more than 450 beds each. As we have mentioned earlier, our growth would, not, would comprise not only of our brownfield expansion efforts, but also our effort towards expansion of our size and scale to inorganic forays. We have spoken with you previously on some of our underperforming assets and the need to rationalize our portfolio. Continuing with this, we have successfully divested two of our underperforming facilities in Chennai and have exited that market. In parallel, we also acquired a potential 4 by 50 bedded facility in Vanekar Gurgram uh, that we expect to commission shortly. This was further strengthen our presence in the NCR cluster. Another critical aspect worth noting is the continuous success of our digitization efforts. Our progress in digital transformation, notably through the implementation of EMR program, is moving forward positively. We have successfully implemented EMR for OP modules across four units in the first phase of EMR rollout. Revenue generated from digital channels continue to exhibit healthy growth. In financial year 24, revenues from website, mobile apps, and digital campaigns increased 27% over the last year and contributed 25.2% to the overall 
hospital revenue as compared to 22% in financial year 23. In order to further improve our patient service experience, we have launched our new patient feedback management system, My Feedback, this year. The platform will enable a more engaging experience as the feedback through WhatsApp and QR codes would be collected. Uh, the application will enable collection of feedback and address immediate patient concerns through its service request feature. On the cost side, emphasis in the year gone by has been on further improving our supply chain and procurement efficiencies and also optimizing costs in respect uh, in aspects related substitution and formularies. We have also been focused on optimizing manpower costs and looking at means to increase productivity. While these are ongoing exercise, cost saving and optimization across select expense lines have also had a positive impact on our PNL in the year. Some thoughts on our diagnostic business. Our overall diagnostic business showed marginal <coughs> growth, but our non-COVID business revenue grew 5% for the quarter and 6% for the financial year 24 over corresponding previous periods. The diagnostic business performance has been soft primarily due to the change in the brand to Agilus, resulting in comprehensive rebranding exercise and related expenses on such rebranding and marketing. In addition, there were certain provisions related to government business that have also impacted the performance. Having said that, and while Anand will take you through further details on diagnostic business, I firmly believe that this business has significant potential to scale up both in terms of its revenue and margins. It has a sizable network presence, a balanced B2B, B2C mix of, and is increasing its focus on the wellness portfolio and specialized testing. The industry has also begun to show signs of improvement and lessening competitive pressures. We are undertaking all efforts to ensure that Agilis' performance is progressively better going forward, but I leave it to Anand to talk further on this. Before I end my comments, I will take a moment to thank all our stakeholders, employees, patients, and clinicians for their support in the year gone by. We strive for excellence in healthcare delivery. We strive for good clinical outcomes and diagnosis for all our patients. And we work hard to ensure that all our stakeholders recognize and respect the organization for its patient-centric approach. This is and would remain cornerstone of our organization, an organization that each of us feel proud to be part of. I'm hopeful that the coming years would see company going from strength to strength and add value to all our stakeholders. Thank you. And with this, I would hand over to Anand for his comments on the Agilis business. Thank you, Dr. Ravanchi. A very good morning to everyone on the call. Thank you for joining us today. On behalf of Agilis Diagnostics, I warmly welcome you all to our Q4 FY24 results conference call. Agilis Diagnostics reported a revenue of 1,372 crores in FY24 versus 1,347 crores in FY23, representing a 2% increase. Non-COVID revenues increased by about 6% in FY24 against FY23. COVID testing contributed to 0.3% of the revenue for this year, down from 4.4% in FY23. We performed 40 million tests and served 16.4 million patients in the year. Operating EBITDA for the year is INR 209 crores compared to INR 239 crores in FY23. EBITDA margins are 16.3% and 17.7% respectively. During the year, we incurred one-time expenses of 58 crores primarily in relation to Agilis rebranding and the provisioning pertaining to agreements with uh, Director General of Health Services, New Delhi. One of the important highlights of the financial year is that we have successfully undertaken a brand transformation exercise and moved to a new brand, Agilis. We incurred one-time expenses for rebranding post-brand change in May 23. Also, we have made one-time provision in relation to receivables of BGHS uh, Delhi government. 
Considering lack of clear timelines on payment of bills, the company has provided for the entire outstanding. Our operational EBITDA before one-time expenses of 58 crores is 268 crores, representing a margin of 19.5%. Our average realization per test for Q424 is INR352, and realization per patient is INR869. Our average realization for FY24 is INR342 per test, and INR836 per patient. The business continued to have a well diversified geographical mix with no over-dependence on any particular region, allowing it to capitalize on the pan-India network nationally. Regional, regional FY 2023 to 24 uh, revenue contributions were 33% from north, 21% from west, 29% from south, and 14% from east, while we had a 3% contribution from international business. Our wellness portfolio also went up by 14% in FY24 compared to previous fiscal and by 18% in Q4 FY24 compared to Q4 of FY23. From a product standpoint, the revenue contributions are 36% from specialized testing, 54% from routine testing, and 10% from our wellness portfolio for FY24. Quarterly contribution from specialized testing is 34%, from routine is 54%, and from wellness is 12%. Genomics portfolio also went uh, grew, also grew by about 27% in FY24 compared to FY23. Our B2C B2B ratio for FY24 is 53 to 47 compared to 54 to 46 in FY23. We are focused on building the new brand and delivering high quality diagnostic care to patients and doctors. We have reinforced our test menu of 3,600 plus tests with 70 new additional tests and test panels this year. Some of the advanced next-generation diagnostic tests that we have added include pharmacogenomics testing, newborn screening by next-generation sequencing, fetal autopsy testing, cancer hotspot gene panel, comprehensive advanced HLA panel, allergy testing by component resolve diagnostics, and a few, a few more. We will continue to deepen our network, drive further utilization of existing infrastructure, reinforce our test menu, and focus on technology to enhance customer experience. Thank you all, and I now hand over the call to Anurag for further. Uh, thank you, Anil. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we should now begin the question and answer session. Can I request the moderator to begin the speech? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on their touchstone phone. An operator will take your name and announce your turn in the question queue. Participants are requested to use only answers while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. You may please press star and one to ask questions. The first question is from the line of Neha Manpuria from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. Uh, my first question is in the uh, hospital business. Uh, you know, we've gotten to 22% margin in this quarter. I understand there's some one-off. Uh, first, if you could quantify what the one-off was, uh, and second, given our exit uh, margins in the um, you know quarter. Uh, is it fair to assume that we build on this, uh, you know, margin uh, in FI25 uh, because initially we're guided to getting to 22% margins, probably in uh, 26. I just want to understand the trajectory from here. Yeah. Hi, Nia. Uh, good morning. Hi, sir. So, uh, first of all, you know, one off, one off in the quarter. Only you know, some of the uh, uh, adjustment, accounting adjustment has happened in the uh, last quarter pertaining to the full year. So, there is no one off type of exp uh, expenditure. Uh, the normal thing like uh, you know, expected credit losses, provision write back, and things like that. So, those those type of thing which is generally done at the year end. So the EBITDA margin, excluding those entries also for the quarter is around 21%. And um, uh, as regards your uh, other question on uh, build down on the margins, uh, uh, during this financial year, we, we could demonstrate around 2% EBITDA margin improvement over the last year. I am expecting similar type or slightly better than this uh, in the next financial year. So we are, we are maintaining our guidance uh, which we have given earlier. Which is... Uh, 
no uh, what i mean to say is since we are already at 21% margin for fourth quarter i understand there is seasonality in the business so should i assume we build on that 200 basis points on the 21 or i should i still look because we have divested two assets to the year so hence the question yeah yeah no i understand your time so uh, as you know there is a seasonality built in the uh, 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 in the fourth quarter generally is the good quarter for everyone and uh, there is a uh, you know two of the new unit has also been added why you know we have divested certain uh, you know non performing unit so looking at all those things uh, our initial guidance what we have given improvement of the beta margin by 2% will remain for the full year understood year to year, and, uh, year, to year. Understood. And how many beds are we adding uh, in uh, FI25? Will it be 300? I mean, just and, and where exactly will these beds be added? Yeah, well, yeah. So there is a, uh, one is the uh, Faizabad unit which we are uh, adding the beds. Uh, the expansion is almost completed, 50 beds we will be adding. Uh, Kalimar Bag also there is 50 beds we, we will be adding and uh, this will take us to 100 beds for the current financial year. The Manisha facility we are expecting to open by second quarter of this financial year uh, and we will be opening initially 100 beds and we will see how the ramp up goes on. Uh, another facility in Calcutta also we are adding 100 beds. Here you know two floors we are operationalizing and uh, uh, all the doors are in place. And uh, in the first quarter itself, we should be starting those 100 beds. Then the uh, rest of the beds are at the BG Road, which is in Bangalore, where we are expecting some OC to come, and that we are expecting on uh, by the uh, uh, second year, end, second quarter itself, for the current financial year. Got it. Um, and my second question is on uh, diagnostics. Uh, you know, uh, given the impact from the rebranding, I still see that volumes again were negative this quarter. Um, how should we look at the improvement in volumes? Uh, you know, when do you think the rebranding impact on volumes phase, you know, phases out? Not so much on margins, but you know, purely on the. So the line for uh, Ms. Neha has got disconnected. We will move on to the next question, which is from the line of Shyam Srinivasan from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, just the first one, uh, given uh, you know the Supreme Court order or whatever the NGO petition around uh, uh, you know standardized pricing, I just want to know what your take is in terms of how this could likely pan out and uh, a related question is on the RPOB. So we have again seen another 10% kind of RPOB growth for the quarter, maybe for the full year is also similar. So how should we look at RPOB growth uh, looking ahead? Is there any impact or are you trying to see whether the standardization will likely have an impact on how you price your services into fiscal 25 uh, and also the split of RPOB between price and mix if you could highlight. That's my first question. Yeah, so, you know, the first part of uh, related to the, um, you know, the, to, to the PILs and the uh, Supreme Court, etc., I think uh, the tenor of the affidavit filed by the government uh, is very positive according to us. Uh, so we do not expect too much of an impact of it. Uh, I, uh, uh, on the other hand, what we are hearing is that the CTHS and other rates are going likely to be revised upwards. So that would uh, overall not have uh, too much of an impact on uh, uh, the, uh, the on, on that. Uh, regarding the question on RPOB, uh, we definitely had uh, uh, good uh, um, uh, growth in the RPOB. And that was primarily led by the, the, the increase in the surgical volume by about 8% year on year. Uh, and that uh, also is the case mix uh, which uh, led to that change. Now, going forward, I would request Vivek to add to this. Yeah, so I can Vivek to the side. So there is the ARPA increase split, which is the last question you were having, around 3% is uh, uh, towards price increase and balance is uh, for the case mix and uh, uh, specialty mix, uh, better case mix uh, cases basically. 
and going forward uh, because arpo has already started at a higher level we are not expecting this uh, double digit growth rate will continue like this i am expecting more like 5 to 6% uh, arpo growth mainly driven by the specialty uh, and the peer mix uh, improvement so so we are not planning any uh, price increase this year is it or we are almost done or when we benchmark with some of our competitors our pricing is uh, is similar uh, no we we do we will be increasing price so some price increase already factored in the first quarter itself so we generally increase our price by 2 to 2.5% depending upon other uh, competition prices and you know the market forces so that will continue so 2.5% uh, you can safely assume price increase and balance is towards this mix and other things so total arc of increase will be 5.5 to 6% understood very helpful just the second question is on the agilest uh, i i know we had a drsp out there we had to withdraw it for whatever uh, you know market conditions slash whatever the performance of the company uh, so what's the uh, medium term outlook for you know either a listing or when should we look at it uh, also the related question is on the put option liability for the private equity uh, how are we going to navigate it uh, october 2024 is the number is the date i remember but i may be wrong but uh, in a case where some of them want to kind of uh, exercise their put option how will uh, portes slash ihs uh, respond to that thank you yeah sam i will take that question again you know uh, you are you are readily mentioned we have uh, we done as you know the uh, drhp and there is a put option uh, live uh, with the private equity investor so we are working with the private equity investor to come out with a uh, solution for this particular thing so uh, one option is for the revival of the ipo so that we are working with uh, uh, bankers along with the private equity investors for revival of the ipo and parallelly we are working on uh, you know uh, uh, the various other options which may be possible in case you know the revival or it may not be it not possible so uh, from that angle i think we have uh, maybe a uh, uh, couple of months more to finalize this thing so we are wor working on all the uh, all the options are still open and uh, we are working very closely with the private equity investors we said what's the what's the worst case here that we have to take whatever the private equity offers it i'm just i'm just trying to assess what could the worst case be yeah so uh, sam if suppose ipo does not happen and you know uh, we have to honor our obligation of uh, this production liability and uh, we are disclosing the value anyway you know recognize that as a liability in our books already so we will honor that liability and the means of funding uh, funding we will be deciding uh in the uh, depending upon your market situation looking at the balance sheet size and you know the other options uh, we may we may do entirely through that we may do uh, 50% that 50% equity or entirely through equity those things we will be deciding uh, maybe over a period of time but uh, uh, funding may should not be an issue looking at the financial position of the company right if at all you know what case scenario the I, we have to honor the put option the funding is the last uh, is the only option for us and for that i am saying there is uh, um, various option available depending upon our fund position our capital uh, uh, requirement we will decide on the means of funding uh, sorry sir the timeline is correct october 2024 yeah mo uh, yeah so by august we will be knowing which direction we are going um uh, the next uh, uh, call for the first quarter we will be having clear idea which way we are going and uh, maybe another one month we will, yeah, you are right actually this september october maybe the time when when this will be finalized and sorry the last question equity means capital raise at the hold co at portis sorry yes yes that is the so because portis is the uh, having the put option so portis uh, may look for raising equity also <coughs> Understood. Thank you, sir, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Neha Manpuria from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Yeah. Apologies for the last time. Uh, on diagnostic, just wanted to understand uh, how we are looking at revival of the business. You know, we saw uh, negative volume growth. Uh, you know, number of test growth this quarter. Uh, given the rebranding, uh, should we expect a more, uh, you know, slower recovery uh, in that business? 
thanks neha this is anand here uh, in fact for the overall year we have uh, grown the volume non covid volume to actually grown to 6.4% and uh, you know the volumes for the quarter have grown by this 0.6% Uh, we are seeing a recovery on the growth on the volume as well, and also we, if you see, we have taken a price increase around the end of February, and so we expect that also to kick in. So we have taken a price increase of about five to seven percent in the B2C uh, for the B2C business. So uh, that also will be kicking in for this financial year. So we are seeing a recovery on the volume as well. How much volume should we expect? How much volume growth should we expect over the uh, let's say next two years? Should it, uh, you know, should over the next two years we be, uh, you know, uh, agile is be closer to the industry growth? Would that be a fair assumption, or you think that takes longer? So we will be uh, in line with the industry growth. So the industry is expected to grow at about eight to ten percent. So it will be a combination of uh, uh, volume as well as value. So I think it will be primarily volume and to some extent from the value as well. This is for FI25 for the next two to three years. Okay, got it, got it. Um, and uh, you know, just uh, one other question on uh, you know the uh, the entire Fortis business. Uh, if how do what is an update on the High Court? What is the next timeline that we should look out for a possible hearing uh, on the High Court case? Yes, yeah, so the hearings have uh, been happening in the case. Uh, we expect the next hearing to happen on the 15th of next month, uh, and uh, that would probably be one of the final hearings. After which, uh, maybe some arguments will be made, and uh, uh, then we should see some resolution to the case. But uh, we cannot really guess as to how much time that will take. Uh, but uh, it appears now that things are coming towards a uh, conclusion. Okay, that's great. Ah, uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hardik Toshi from White Whale Partners. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. I just wanted to kind of clarify a couple of things regarding margin. Uh, so I think you mentioned that the reported margin is twenty-two point eight percent, and that adjusted for uh, you know the through the year adjustment, uh, it's about twenty-one percent. Uh, So I guess this happens every fourth quarter. So what would be the uh, you know like to like comparison for uh, fourth quarter 23? I think it reported 17 percent, but if you were to make the adjustment, what would be the margin then? Yeah, similar one uh, around one percent adjustment. Uh, you can earmark for the last quarter also. So last quarter margin, reported margin can be uh, should be brought down by one percent. To compare this, uh, got it. So 16 percent went to 21 percent. Yeah. Uh, so uh, is this largely driven by uh, the ARPOV improvement, or is, are there any other factors that grow this uh, 500 basis point year-on-year year improvement? Yeah. So there are a uh, couple of things here. One is, uh, of course, the ARPOV improvement. Uh, you rightly said. Second is the volume growth. You know, the occupancy level has gone up for the quarter. And uh, thirdly, you know, there is an impact of uh, divestment of uh, Maral Malar also, as you were knowing, Malar was uh, incurring losses, and uh, with the divestment uh, which happened in uh, first week, uh, first of February, so two months there was no losses, so that impact was also not there. So all this put uh, together, uh, and plus you know the facility mix improvement also. Uh, which is actually uh, taken care in the ARPA. So that these are the two, three main regions uh, for margin improvement. Got it. Now for FI24, our margins were around 19.2 percent. Uh, did I understand the guidance correct that you expecting a 200 basis point improvement year on year in margins? So FI25 would be about 21 percent. Yeah, we will be uh, we will be around that level only because you know uh, the reported margin will be, uh, should be around 22 percent, um, um, and uh, uh, operating margin is 18.5 percent for the current financial year, so that should also go up by two percent. Okay, uh, but you know you're uh, you're openly planning to open 700 beds. In this financial year, and usually when you open or do ground field expansion, also uh, there is a near-term dip in occupancy, which obviously weighs on margin. So, 
how do you expect like let's say 18.5 percent is operating at the uh, going to 20.5 percent for the full year in spite of such a large bad addition yeah so most of the bad additions are coming in the uh, as a brown field uh, which i have mentioned like anandpur uh, uh, this uh, faridabad salimar bag these are all brown field expansion and in the units which are already operating at around 75 percent plus occupancy level so we are not seeing any challenge in filling those beds. Uh, of course, you know the Manesar one is a is a new facility because this hospital was not operational. So that is something which you uh, 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 you know uh, we have estimated uh, initial negative contribution from this unit in the current financial year. Uh, apart from this, I don't see any uh, other unit where we will be having any you know uh, margin impact. So that we have already captured, uh, taken care of while giving this guidance. Got it, got it. Okay, and uh, and then in the medium term, I mean, what are your aspirations from a margin perspective? Where do you think uh, you can go to, let's say, three to five years out? Yeah, so we, we are maintaining, we are moving very, uh, you, you know, uh, I will say uh, on the right track. Uh, we have given the guidance that the last quarter we should be uh, touching 20% margin, we have exceeded that expectation actually, and uh, we expect that uh, uh, you know we will be around 25% margin in next two to three years time. Great. This one last question for me is, uh, you know, in terms of divestment, uh, we exited uh, Chennai now completely. Are there any other divestments that we can look for, or like you know, look at maybe over the next 12 months? So we have done two actually, and uh, 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 there is no immediate plan of any uh, divestment which is having meaningful, meaningful impact on the financial. There is one small unit which we are uh, looking at, but it is not having any meaningful impact on the financial. Okay, all right. Thank you much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanjay Shah from KSA Securities Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for opportunity. Uh, Doctor, my question was regarding uh, our capex plan, which we have planned for next uh, uh, few years on brownfield side. Uh, uh, I need to understand: uh, Do we have any this scope of growing brownfield in Faridabad and uh, Anandpur and Shalimar? So, is there limitations, or after that, how we plan to go ahead from there? And this capex is going for treasury treatment or secondary treatment? facility yeah so all these hospitals you mentioned both Faridabad as well as Anandpur are currently working at a high occupancy rate so this capacity will easily get absorbed over there uh, so brownfield expansion is uh, being done selectively in the units where the occupancy levels are already significantly higher uh, and uh, this uh, would lead, this is probably the most efficient way to have a significant uh, growth. Uh, really yeah, sure, sir. So, uh, uh, you know, these two units, uh, uh, there is a further capacity for uh, capacity extension. Like in Faridabad, uh, there is space available, and uh, we have planned to further extend and add certain more facility there. Uh, but we will see how the safety beds went uh, will happen. Uh, as regard uh, Anandpur, we have acquired a company uh, with uh, with the adjacent land parcel, so we want to operationalize that also. So post extension of this hundred beds, we will be adding maybe another fifty beds in the next financial year for uh, uh, in that unit. So both are uh, having those type of uh, uh, growth uh, prospect available. And Salimar Bag, uh, we are uh, we are building another tower uh, in the adjacent north and that should give us another 200 plus beds uh, in Salimar. So uh, this is uh, this is already included in our overall plan of expansion of 2200 beds which we have shared earlier. 2200 beds totally it will give us. Yeah. So what capex will be required for that brownfield total 2000 beds addition? Yeah, so some of the capex has already been incurred in that. So additional capex will be somewhere around 1200 crore, 1200 to 1300 crore, which include equipment also, everything. Okay, their focus will be more of a tertiary one or uh, it will be a mix of secondary, primary, and tertiary one? 
it is phase three only. Uh, so it will be uh, all of our hospital are uh, multi specialty hospital, and the second is uh, we have the ranking extension is coming. We will strengthen our uh, strengthen our position there, and we may add certain more facilities there. And sir, uh, how we did uh, last year on international patient uh, demand, and uh, what was the occupancy on that side, and how you see that future going ahead? So we are uh, international uh, business is contributing around the eight uh, eight 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 percent plus to our total revenue. We expect this uh, percentage to slightly go up uh, uh, going forward, and uh, this is a uh, good. Uh, profitable segment for us and uh, focus area for us uh, for further growing this uh, segment so my last question was regarding uh, any update on uh, brand uh, rebranding our uh, 40s to parkway any highlight on that any progress on that side so we are uh, yeah so sanjay we are uh, not uh, immediately considering anything Uh, our preference is to retain the brand, uh, and uh, since it's a uh, kind of a court-related matter and legal issue, uh, so we are waiting for that to get resolved. Uh, once that is resolved and we have clarity on the brand, then only we will take a decision on actually making a change if necessary. That's really helpful. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Pino P from Ilara. Please go ahead. Hi. Um, good morning to all. Um, Doctor, I want you in response to an earlier question you had uh, mentioned about uh, CGHS rates being revised up. Uh, could you please put that in context for us, please? Uh, because I think a few months back or a year back we had a revision, and I, as I understand, it's once in five years that it typically happens. So, are you referring to some out of turn increase that is likely? Yeah. So, in 2014 was when the last rate revision happened. Last year, some of the diagnostic uh, rates were revised upwards. However, the rest of the packages, which forms the bulk of the DSS work, was not revised at that time. Uh, but what we believe we have been made to understand by the health secretary is that the work is in progress, and that is likely to uh, be revised sometime uh, in near future. And and uh, does it uh, happen in tandem for the entire industry, or or is it uh, group by group or hospital by hospital? No, no, it happens for the entire industry. Okay. And uh, since it is after ten years, are you expecting a very big jump, and maybe twenty, thirty percent, forty percent? It's difficult to predict with government. Uh, I think uh, I would leave uh, and wait and watch this space. Understood. Um, second, uh, earlier you had a target of six thousand beds by FY twenty eight. Uh, is that the valid target as of date? Yeah. So we are, we are uh, moving. Uh, uh, you know, at pace uh, to achieve the target. We are on target. Great. And the uh, last question uh, regarding this uh, agile or private equity exit. Uh, even if we had to uh, pay that money to the PE and buy out their portion, uh, still it would be only a cash flow entry, right? Um, there won't be any CML uh, nor for provision that required, right? Is my understanding correct? Yeah, so there will not be any P&L impact, and cash flow. I have already explained that we have enough resources right now uh, to honor that liability that at all. It will come on. Got it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Ashok Thawani from Clear Blue Capital Advisors LLC. Please go ahead. Hi. Thank you for taking my question, and congratulations on a good set of numbers. my first question is on the last call we had mentioned that we are uh, running at about uh, 70% capacity uh, occupancy and i think we had the call somewhere mid february if i'm not mistaken and we had mentioned that we'll exit the quarter at at that uh, rate but uh, 
our uh, occupancy has come uh, lower than that. I just wanted to understand uh, what happened out there. Yeah, so uh, you are absolutely right. So our uh, our target level was seventy percent only, uh, but a couple of our hospitals, uh, well, three of our hospitals, uh, the occupancy level was not at the desired level. Uh, one of them is uh, two of them in Bangalore, uh, Bombay. Melun uh, is the big one, and uh, another BG Road also is operating at around sixty percent only, and Jaipur is also uh, there is a capacity shortfall. So we are working on these units. And because of these three units only, you know, we, uh, our overall occupancy level we could not achieve seventy uh, percent. So we are working on the plan. Good news is uh, for the first quarter of the current financial year, uh, uh, Mulun and the Bigi Road has start showing very good uh, results. Okay, so we, uh, we are actually now almost end of May. So what kind of occupancy have we seen in uh, April and May? Uh, so uh, right now we are at around the seventy uh, percent for the overall company. Yeah, overall company. So uh, this quarter we should report seventy percent. Yeah, let us wait for uh, another one and a half months. Okay, okay, uh, fair. Uh, can I? I'll come back in nine. I'll come back in nine for my next question. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. The next question is from the line of Nitin Agarwal from DAM Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for your question. So, Vivek sir, uh, on the hospital matrix, margin matrix that we provide, we've got still about eight hospitals which are below 15% margins. Uh, you know, when you look through the next two, three years, how many hospitals do you see actually moving away from, uh, moving out from this margin range, uh, you know, with the initiatives that you have in mind? Yeah, so we uh, uh, luckily, you know, uh, the hospital which are not on uh, uh, good margin metrics uh, are in, are improving. Okay, and um, uh, so we see that out of eight, Faridabad definitely will uh, should move out because of all this expansion because the economy of scale it, this year hospital will be uh, getting, and um, uh, KHI and, and Jaipur is also uh, moving in the right direction. So I I will pick two to three hospital we can easily target uh, that they will be moving up. Uh, other hospital are either very small or there are some issues like uh, if they create hard is very small hospital so C H road they, it is a rent, rental model so that's why you know the margin is uh, uh, below 15 percent. Ludhiana so, is the new unit uh, so uh, we have to give some time for this unit to uh, improve. It's so fair to say that you know these hospitals right now, that you mentioned about 20% of our revenues, a good chunk of this 20% of the revenues will see meaningful margin expansion over the next two, three years, or rather two couple of years with some of these uh, uh, initiatives playing out. Uh, about 20% of the revenue will have a me meaningful margin delta. Yes, that will also contribute to uh, you know the achieving the overall EBITDA margin which I have guided earlier. Right. Sir. And sir, uh, lastly, on the, the top end of the uh, EBITDA, where we've got eight hospitals in 20-25%, so is 25% the upper range for our, our sort of best-performing hospitals, or are there hospitals which have gone much beyond that also? Yeah, so I think uh, uh, it is not the range. Uh, I think there is uh, uh, the possibility there that we can achieve even higher margin on these hospitals, and these hospitals uh, are also extending. So we will be getting economy of scale and you know the manpower productivity which Dr. Gonsi had mentioned earlier. Uh, so all those things would play and in my view there is a scope to improve in at least uh, some of the hospital with a margin higher than 25%. Okay, so the last one sir, what is our uh, share of CGHS revenue or I probably missed that number for the year? So overall government revenue is around 20%. It has slightly gone up in the financial year as if we compare with the previous year, and that is one lever which we we will be exploring in the current financial year uh, to improve. And so how much of that would be CGHS? CGHS is four percent of the overall revenues. Yeah. And so when the CGHS rate changes happen, does it have impact on the other part of your uh, government revenue also? Yes, yes. A uh, lot of rates like ECHS, etc., are linked to the CDSS rates. 
Yes, this is sort of like the mother scheme, and most of the rates are uh, uh, equal to that. So then, where do you assume that a fair chunk of or a reasonable proportion of this 20% will also get uh, will probably get uh, uh, better rates uh, once as and when the CGHS rates get revised? Yeah, but overall, you know, even still, we would uh, aim to bring this uh, percentage from 20%. We'll bring, aim to bring this slightly lower. Uh, though we expect that you know that the realizations here might improve in future, uh, but at the same time our objective is to keep this around 15%, which we may not be able to achieve immediately, but over the next one and a half years or so, we should try to bring this down to below 15%. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nancy Yadav from. Allegro Capital, please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, thanks for taking my question. I wanted to understand the NDF impact uh, on our financials for both the quarter and the financial year. And it would be great if you could provide the numbers for uh, the hospital and diagnostic business separately. Uh, which MDF? You mean lease renter leasing? Yes, uh, one one six. Yeah, maybe Anurag may give you separately, uh, uh, send the number separately. Right now it is not uh, readily available to us. I think we'll, we'll connect and we can provide those numbers. Okay. Uh, so our second question is regarding the uh, margin improvement again in the hospitals. I was looking at the operating EBITDA numbers. Uh, we have gone up on YOI, we have gone up 16.4 to 22.3 for the quarter. Uh, if you could uh, provide some color, even uh, accounting for divestment, how much of this is coming from the divestment of facilities, the margin improvement, and how much is coming from, let's say, uh, the surgical mix improvement? Yeah, so uh, I think around 1% you can assume uh, uh, from the divestment and uh, other initiatives we have taken, and rest is all from the improvement in the occupancy level, as well as on the uh, uh, improvement in the peer mix, uh, sorry, uh, specialty mix. And uh, so if I have a no key, uh, from when are the divestments uh, have been excluded from the financials? Is it uh, for the whole quarter or for, from the February? From February only, from the date when we have divested. So uh, only two months of uh, uh, Exclusion has given us a percent. I was selling on my knowledge basis. Okay, okay. So I was, if I compare with let's say Q3 previous quarter, 18 to 22 percent. So one percent is coming from uh, from the investment and three percent is coming from the occupancy and surgical. Is that the right understanding? Yeah, annualized basis it will be around five six because mother divestment only happened in February. Though Arcot vote has happened in July. Uh, in July, so it is around 0.6% in, uh, in the year. Uh, the uh, you know the margin improvement may be attributed to poor, towards uh, this divestment, and plus some uh, cost uh, uh, which we have taken on the until year, and plus you know this facility mix uh, lead to this uh, margin improvement. Sorry, uh, uh, I could not get uh, understand. It is can you please repeat. Yeah, what I said, around 0.6% on the annualized uh, from when you're comparing last year with the current yes. year, 0.6% may be attributable toward the uh, portfolio rationalization initiative. And balance uh, is uh, towards the cost optimization, mainly in the manpower cost, and some of the uh, uh, you know procurement-related uh, improvement which we have done, formulary and procurement-related in initiative which the company has done. And rest is all attributed towards a better case mix and better specialty mix. Okay, okay. Thanks. That helps. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Sion Mukherjee from Nomura Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for taking my question. So just uh, one question on, you know, the the way you think about RPOV going forward, you know, just slowing down from 10% to 5%. Now, if you have 2%, 3%, let's say price growth, uh, is it that the case mix is, you know, kind of uh, the change or the favorable change in the case mix is slowing down? Uh, or and because, you know, a lot of the growth and expansion is also 
likely to come in facilities which have relatively higher RPOB. So I'm just wondering why, you know, the growth expectations on RPOB is, uh, you know, on a lower side. Uh, yeah, Sion, so I, I think uh, the reason for uh, predicting 5 to 6 percent RPOB increase as compared to double digit RPOB increase we are seeing in the last two years is the base is already these day level, particular level. And plus, uh, if you see our specialty mix also, there is a uh, good growth we, we could have demonstrated in the onco business, which is you know, our high RPOB business. Um, uh, having said that, we still feel there will be some uh, further improvement in the RPOB. Uh, and uh, uh, two, two, three percent may be attributed towards the price increase. Balance is from the case mix and the facility mix. And uh, uh, you rightly mentioned in some of our facility we have added uh, good equipment, uh, especially in our Dugaon facility we have uh, um, the gamma knife and the ML will uh, uh, The benefit of that we should be getting, and that has been factored into this after increase. And so, and can you think uh, slightly medium term, like you know, next two three years, you think five six percent is what uh, should sustain? Yeah, I will say around four to five percent in the medium term. Okay, and just one question on pricing because this year also, you know, you talk about uh, you know talked about two three percent uh, kind of a price price increase. Uh, I think that's some commentary, similar commentary we hear from most companies. I'm just wondering, uh, you know, uh, because in the healthcare system, we have seen like pharma companies or even diagnostic companies take, you know, uh, price hikes which are even higher. Uh, given the, you know, the nature of the business, where you're, putting, you know, uh, sort of providing high-end services, uh, I'm just wondering why, uh, you know, your price growth is even below the general inflation. Yeah, so and that's a million dollar question actually. Uh, you see, the problem is that, you know, the healthcare industry remains so much under the glare of media and public uh, interest groups that uh, the industry has to calibrate the price changes very, very carefully. Uh, it is true that uh, the, uh, you know, inflation rate doesn't cover the um, uh, the price hikes which are taken generally. Uh, however, that is being covered by building in efficiencies and uh, uh, and the usual case mix change, etc. I won't say that the pace of uh, uh, you know the tertiary quaternary care coming to uh, the organized sector. I would say not only us but the other groups as well. Uh, uh, we, that will continue to happen. Uh, as more and more uh, business uh, starts getting organized, then, you know, the smaller nursing homes and smaller setups will find it difficult with the penetration of insurance to do the that kind of administrative activity. But prices uh, will remain under a little bit of pressure uh, simply because of the uh, sentiment around it. Understood, sir. And just one last question, uh, you know, with the guidance of uh, improvement in margin, 200 basis points, uh, that you have provided, uh, does that factor in the rate revision for CGHS or if that happens, that's over and above any benefit we get there? No, see, that uh, rate revision of uh, CGHS may happen, what time it may happen, we don't know. So we haven't really factored that in our calculation. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Dhawal Kut from Jeffries. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you, sir, for taking my question. I just wanted to know what was the branding expense in the quarter, and uh, do we expect uh, such branding ex uh, expenses to continue in next, uh, you know, two three quarter? So, Jeff, I think you're asking about the branding expense for Agilus, right? Yeah. So we have uh, done about 31 crores of branding, branding expense last year, and uh, this will continue over this year as well. We will have uh, additional spending on branding uh, this year. As okay. Well. And what was the figure for, for the quarter? Uh, 30, we couldn't hear you, please. Uh, what was the expense for the quarter, quarter four? Six crores. Six crores. Okay. 
and secondly uh, my understanding was that you know supreme court had ordered status quo uh, in terms of you know the promoter shareholding in fortis so for our put option liability it was you know answered that we could look at a mix of debt plus equity so can that litigation become a hindrance to our ability to raise funds yeah so supreme court to stay uh, the thing that petition was finally dismissed in supreme court so that doesn't exist anymore uh, so we have uh, uh, you know the consulted our legal uh, uh, um, advisors as well as uh, we have had an informal discussion with some bankers in sebi as well and uh, we are uh, pretty confident that there should not be any challenge in that Okay, thank you. Thank you for taking my question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Madhav Marta from FIN. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I had two questions. Uh, the first one was, uh, given that we have uh, a good, uh, uh, interesting brownfield pipeline which will uh, unfold for us over the next three four years, uh, could you give us some sense in terms of? Um, how much could be the uh, it volume growth or the occupied beds growth that we could see uh, if we could build in some reasonable occupancy assumptions over the next 3 4 years uh, if you could give us some sense in terms of the overall top line guidance uh, given that let's say arpop grows at 5 6% uh, how much could be um, the volume of the patient in so part act to that yeah we expect around 7 to 8% uh, uh, you know from the volume side and it is it will be mainly driven by you know better uh, occupancy growth as well as you know this brownfield expansion taking kicking in and so it could be like low to mid teens kind of revenue growth basically right with volume and um, arp up coming through together for us broadly yes yes Understood. Got it. That's that's helpful. And my second question was that um, you know, uh, fingers crossed that the legal case gets resolved uh, in the next few months or quarters, whenever that happens. Uh, would that mean that you know, I think we have been incurring uh, a decent amount of legal cost uh, towards this case um, uh, for some time now? So could you just help us understand that if this you know legal case gets resolved, how much uh, legal cost saving could we have uh, uh, for the company? Thank you. yeah so we uh, as uh, uh, this case are finalized uh, uh, we we expect you know the legal cost would come down but it will all depend uh, how quickly this could be uh, could be taken care of right now we are incurring almost uh, uh, 30 to 50 crore rupees in the legal cost which is relating to these uh, legacy type of issues so once uh, as we able to resolve all these uh, these issues this cost will definitely go uh, Got it. So thirty to fifty crore, just this particular legal case, right? The one which is so it goes away. That should almost completely go away. So that's how we should think. No, I would think total uh, legal cost relating to all the legacies. Yeah. So you know there is a uh, brand related litigation, there is a this uh, forensic audit related litigation, then there is a you know RSP also we are trying to wind up for where you know yeah. we are incurring some cost. All this put together, I have put this number. Makes sense. Sir. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Atul Minoja from United Healthcare. Please go ahead. So, uh, hello, Doctor Raghuvanshi. Uh, first of all, uh, congratulations for a wonderful quarter. My question is uh, uh, with respect to uh, you know inorganic growth. Are you looking to you know acquire some valuable assets in existing clusters? that's my question yes 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 thank you so much uh, definitely uh, we have uh, been looking for uh, assets within the given clusters five defined clusters where we are present and uh, where there are uh, some uh, possible opportunities uh, we would look for that and uh, any immediate uh, pipeline visibility on that front Ah uh, no, nothing we can comment on at the moment. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prashant Nair from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you, uh, Mahalo everyone. Uh, just a couple of questions. Uh, the first question is on your uh, uh, current network. Uh, I mean, would you 
still expect some more rationalization of uh, you know the network or you know uh, hospitals either being sold or uh, discontinued or are you largely done with that no, we would definitely uh, consider an uh, option which uh, is value equitative to our uh, company. Uh, but some of the uh, kind of you know uh, ideas we have around that is that it should be within the given cluster, or there should be some uh, attractive reason why we would go to a new geography. Uh, then that asset should be of that uh, nature. Uh, so that is why we are not uh, close to going out of our cluster. However, the focus would be to be in the existing cluster so that we can take the advantage of synergies, manpower, costs, etc. Uh, so we will continue to 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 do do, do that. Yeah, and and uh, from the current hospitals that you have, uh, are there still any uh, which are not? Uh, you know, doing as well as you want them to do, and where you could look at options similar to, uh, you know, what you did with the Chennai hospitals, uh, or uh, do you think that this set of hospitals you will continue with and work on doing? Yeah, so there, there are, uh, you know, there are about four or five hospitals which fall in that bucket. Uh, two of them are uh, strategic in nature, and we believe that we can turn them around. So there the focus is uh, to do that. Uh, but there are certain smaller setups which uh, uh, we may consider. Uh, as Vivek said earlier, uh, they are not very significant in size, but there are a couple of small ones which we would uh, certainly be looking to uh, rationalize them in the future. Uh, thanks. And uh, last question, uh, you know, the, uh, this is related to the put option uh, on, uh, you know, on Agilis. Uh, so uh, le if you, I mean, you mentioned you have, uh, you know, adequate uh, capacity to uh, to uh, pay if that put option gets exercised. Uh, would that uh, have any bearing on your bed addition plans, the 2,000 odd beds that you have uh, uh, you know that you have mentioned, or do you think you'll be you'll have enough funding to to execute on that as well? No, our brownfield expenses will not be affected at all with this. Uh, you know, if we have to acquire this uh, even through debt, and uh, the, the answer is no, there will not be any impact on our brownfield expansion if we acquire this production. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's it. Sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Ashok Thawani from Clear Blue Capital Advisors LLP. Please go ahead. Thank you for taking my follow-up question. Uh, I'm not sure if I missed the answer to this question. I wanted to know what our average realization per test and our average realization per patient has jumped this quarter. Um, can you can you explain what has happened exactly in the quarter? So, um, see, our average uh, uh, revenue per patient has grown by about 2.7%, uh, and our average uh, realization per test has jumped by about 4.2% in this quarter. So this is uh, primarily due to two reasons. There has been a price increase around the uh, middle of uh, February, so which has a higher impact on uh, our March numbers, as well as, uh, you know, in the last uh, the previous year, same quarter, we had a high contribution from our, uh, you know, uh, Delhi government project, uh, which has uh, been reduced in this quarter. Okay, okay. But is it fair to say there is some kind of pricing uh, power that is returning to this industry as a whole? So we have uh, we have taken a price increase very recently. And uh, as we know that, you know, uh, we are now... Um, you know, most of the diagnostic companies have taken a price increase uh, during this financial year and the previous financial year. And uh, um, the, the online players have all now settled and uh, they are also taking price increases. So I think overall uh, there is no uh, big pressure on pricing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I would now hand the conference over to Mr. Anurag Kalra 
for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Michelle. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us on the call today. I hope we've been able to uh, answer your questions as best possible. In case of any follow-up questions and data, please feel free to reach out to Amit, my colleague, or myself, and we'll be happy to help you. Thank you once again, and have a good day. Thank you, members of the management. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Fortis Healthcare Limited, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.